Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. I got sent some film the other day, some Ferrania P30. <laughs> Kindly from Martin Bessler out in Germany. Martin, if you're watching, thanks for sending me the film. I have used this film before in the past, and for those that are familiar with this film, you'll know that it's quite a punchy, hard-hitting contrast film. And that's the results I got last time when I shot it. Real deep shadows and a real kick in the contrast. But uh, for those of you that don't know about this film or are not aware of it, I've got up the Frenia's website in front of me and I'll just read you from what it says on there. They say the Italian masters of the mid 20th century used P30 cinema stock in some of the world's most beloved movies. It became so popular that a version was created for still photography as well. Our team has recreated the original formula for the modern days. And if you go onto the Internet Movie Database and type in the search for Arnie P30, you get a list of films that come up associated with that stock film. Uh, if you click on one, for example, this one here from 1960, you delve a little bit deeper into it and you start looking at all the credits and the companies involved and you can see uh, it says there, Frania P30 film stock. So it looks like they used this stock in that movie. And I went out and shot this film the other day and I came back as expected with hardly in contrast images. I developed it in Xtile one part to one part, 12 minutes, as it says on that website and also on the massive dev chart. Um, but I wonder what different dilutions in Xtile would do for this film. You know, can I bring more detail out in the shadows? Um, so I've decided I'm gonna do a few tests with Xtile one part to one part, one part to two, one part to three, and then also use Rodnol as well, one part to 50, and a stand development in Rodnol, just to see the differences. P30 is a real hard hitting, contrasty film, and that's its characteristics. That's what people love it for, and that's why people buy it. So uh, I'll show you the scene, what I'm gonna be taking photographs of, and then we'll get some tests done, and I'll show you the results afterwards. So this is the Frank Asilida 3. This is gonna be my model for my tests. You can see I've got some photographic paper here, and it's got the sweeping background going up the wall, which I've taped. Um, and there's a large window there, light coming through. And I've also got this uh, bit of white card, which is just gonna bounce some light back into the, into the camera. And I've chose this subject because it's got lots of blacks and it's got lots of highlights as well. So I've got my meter. I'm just gonna do some incident readings and then uh, dial that into the uh, camera and start doing my tests. First thing I'm going to do is just take a couple of digital shots and uh, as a reference for, for later on in the video. Um, I've got this board here, like I said, this is a little reflection, I'll show you the difference. So I'm just using this to fill into the shadow areas a bit more. So it's quite even lighting in there, there's not much difference between the light coming from the window or pointing it towards the camera. So I'm looking at half a second at f8. Let's dial that into the digital. F8, half a second. And that looks okay. So I'm happy with what I've done here, the lighting bouncing back in. I'm gonna transfer over now to the film. A half a second, I shouldn't, I shouldn't um, reach any reciprocatory failure times at all at half a second, so that's not gonna concern me. So I've already been in the dark room and I've made a contact print and made a few little prints around the tests. I think I've found what I was looking for. And before I show you those results, I did put a post out on the P30 on the community tab on YouTube and also my Instagram account. And I've got some interesting feedback coming back from you guys. So uh, I'll just read out some of the, some of the comments that I got uh, regarding that film. 
And I'm going to apologise now if I butcher some people's names, but Tony per Perator says uh, he's never tried the film. Uh, here in Italy, it's available. He thinks it costs around 12 euros a roll. I think it's about eight, eight to 10 quid a roll here. Analogy or analog says, um, do a model shoot with lots of red in the scene. Uh, Erop says, textured surfaces with some simple geometry maybe. Good idea. Sounds like a trip to London is in order. That was from... Travis Trout. Oscar says uh, shoot some abandoned toys. Zeng Ricky says he's just finished a roll of Ferrani P30 shooting a portrait at Greenwich Park. Luigi Alberto Febril, sorry mate if I've butchered it. Thanks for your comment. He says uh, is the film used by Italian cinematographers maybe something inspired to the Italian Dolce Vita, something like Piat. Piaggio Vespa, which I think is a moped. Nick says, I've read that X-Tol can tame the contrast. Um, Neil Pentecost from Cornwall, he says, uh, when do I get my P30 gift? Mate, you always make me laugh. Let's get on to the Instagram stuff. Core Fault Photo says, uh, photograph a race of some kind. Unknown Art Division says, uh, I've tried the Alpha version only once and had nice results in Rodnell, one part to 100 semi stand for 45 minutes. That's pretty much what I've done, uh, but that was for an hour. VJ Kethamaka, I think, I think that's, sorry mate if I've butchered that, but uh, VJ Kethamaka says uh, he shot a few detailed shots on his Yashica D camera and a few other things with the Ferrania P30 on his Nikon F3. The results were just beautiful. And again, semi-stand in Rodno. I'm not going to pronounce that one. Uh, HC1110, which is Kodak HC110, uh, one part of 31 for five minutes. So another a different idea of a developer there. Phil Ferrania came through as well on Instagram and said, we have the best practices on our on our website with their PDF. Massey Magret, I can't pronounce it. Massey Mogrico uh, underscore IT he says Kodak T Max development one part to six for seven minutes at 24 degrees. So again, you know, you've only got a certain developers to try out. I've only got X Toll and Rodnell that I've been playing with. The chances of me buying this film again and again and again, uh, you know, I just want to try and learn how to develop it in the developer that I regularly use rather than buy a specific developer for that film, not to shoot the film, and then the developer just sits on the side and, and I don't know if it's going to be duff um, next time I come around to shooting that film. But guys, thanks a lot for replying um, to Instagram and on the YouTube community tab as well regarding this film. Now, I've got one roll left, so I've already done a bit of developing. I'll get in the dark room after and show you the results. I've got one roll left, and I'm going to go out and shoot a few of these frames inside the Olympus OM20 with the 50mm on it, and uh, we're going to go and see someone you might know. So, it's Gaz. I've asked Gaz to bring out his Vespa. Is it a Vespa, Gaz? It, it is, is a Vespa. Vespa 125. It's, it's an Italian bike, so it's low, low. Oh, mate, what are you wearing? Uh, well, traditional mod wear. <laughs> is that a helmet? Yeah, 1960s cork. It's made out of cork. <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, it is illegal. Illegal. But you'll ride it anyway. Yeah. All right, we'll cut that bit out. Um... Right, let's get the lights dropping. So we're going to get this shot of Gaz on his Vespa and then a couple of shots of the Vespa with this background as well. <laughs> hey. Guys, as it's your bike, yes. I'm going to give you three photographs. Oh no. And I'll print one for you. Okay. All right. <laughs> it's all set up. Um, the, just got to uh, uh, get your composition, get the tripod. It's all set up to go. Oh, is it? Yeah, so you get whatever you want to get. Oh, okay. Can I move it forward? Yeah, you yeah, do what you like. Okay. Guys, 
Your phone! <laughs> he left his phone in my pocket. <laughs> you left your phone in my pocket. Good lord, and he knows the code. <laughs> okay, try again. Don't call me, <laughs> I'll call you. So what is the chances of that? I knew Gaz had a moped and it was a Vespa and a Piaggio one as well. You know, Gaz is a man that's, <laughs> that's got everything. Um, you know, going in his basement, is full of shit. But anyway, um, he had a Vespa and went out and did those photographs. Now the lighting on them uh, on that scene I just showed you with, with me and Gaz and, and the Vespa, it was low light. It was the sun was just going down and it was quite shady. So we was hitting kind of like you know a quarter of a second shutter speed. So you have to be very careful. I didn't even take my cable release because I didn't envision the lights to be that low, but we ended up, um, I turned up at Gaz's house and he was still having his dinner, so we had to wait for a bit longer to, to go out. His wife would have battered him if he'd gone out without having his dinner. Anyway, we got some nice photographs, and uh, the first test that I did, I showed you some of the pictures at the start of the video. The second roll, um, I burst off the uh, Franca Salida 3 camera and I realized that one part to two worked best for me in 14 minutes and that's what I developed the negatives when I shot with Gaz on the Vespa. So um, I'll show you the negatives from, from the test print that I did. There's a contact sheet from it as well. So I'll show you those negatives and then I'll get on the enlarger and we'll make a nice print of one of the photographs that Gaz took because as I promised, I said I'd let him have one. So these are the negatives from the first roll I shot when I just went for a walk around around the beach and I did a few other things as well, some uh, some pasta there in some <laughs> pasta looking sticks, a couple of shells and a pot plant but uh, most of the stuff was outside on a sunny day and you can see the negs are, they're alright, look, they look punchy as I expected. Um, and then I went and did my little test. So this is my test, this is one part to one part x toll, and you can see it's quite contrasty punchy. We toned it down a little bit with one part to two, and again with one part to three. One part to two is what I chose, don't forget. And then this was the Rodnell at one part to 50. Not as punchy as x -Tol, but it came out okay. And that was the stand or semi-stand development that I did. Uh, one part to 100 for 60 minutes on a stand development. Just a few inversions at the start and then let the rest of it um, go. So that wasn't too bad either. But out of all of them, it was definitely one part to two that caught my eye. And these are Gaz's negs. You can see these are ones I took of Gaz on his moped. We went to a couple of different locations with some nice backgrounds. Uh, the silver one certainly jumped out on me. Um, and these are the ones that Gaz took, one, two, three. He wanted to take an extra one um, with his foot in the shot. So I took that for him. He wanted to show his shoe off, um, but they're all quite nice. They've come out really well. So I'm gonna print one for Gaz first, and I'm gonna print probably the back of his bike with his glasses. I quite like that one. Or maybe the last one that I took of just the bike. Okay, so I've put the negative in the enlarger. It's all ready to go. I just kind of, we're just kind of missing the top of the bike, but the hat and the number plate in the back of the bike, it's all sitting there nice and happy. So I'm gonna stick a two and a half grade filter into my enlarger. And that's what I'm gonna work with. Um, I'm just gonna do a quick, Focus check. And bearing in mind this is one part to two, the grain is very fine looking through here. It is really fine, so I'm not sure how Rodnell would have held up. I haven't looked at the Rodnell negatives under here, but that's what I'm going with. And we'll just do a quick test strip. Two seconds. I'll place it down the back of the bike where that stripe is, see if I can get something from that. Two seconds. 
two, four, six, eight, ten. Let's stick that in the developer and have a look. So that's it, I've just finished off my darkroom session. I'll show you the prints in a minute. What better way to finish a darkroom session with a bottle of, of Italian beer, beer Moretti, look at that. I'm gonna drown that in a bit. Um, I'll show you some of the prints. That was Gaz's, uh, the headlight, it's meant to be, I don't know what way up it is actually, I was that way up. Uh, that's his headlight, that, that, that one's still drying at the moment, so I'm gonna let that dry, but uh, nice print there, nice photograph taken by Gaz. And another one Gaz took which is that one. I did two prints of this. Um, the first one I cocked up the framing, so I did another one. I'll, I'll keep this one for myself, I won't waste that, but uh, I'm gonna give that one to Gaz as well. This is funny little helmet there with the glasses. And the back of the bike with that corrugated um, background look quite nice. And then that was the, fun, uh, the other one I took there which was the bike on its own, again, against that background, um, which, you no, know, really nice. I've got some nice tones going on. Uh, a bit punchy, like we said, and uh, I know it is, but it is what it is. It is that sort of film, and I think they look great, to be honest with you. Nice film, and I look forward to grabbing a few rolls in the future and shooting again. Maybe get up to London and do some street photography at some point in the future. But uh, anyway, guys, I've had fun in the dark room. I had fun with Gaz. I hope you had fun watching it. Thanks for watching. If you watched till the end, don't forget to subscribe, like, and all that stuff. I'll catch you next time. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. <laughs>